Hello viewers, in this video, we are going to be using chat GBT to build a data pipeline. And chat GBT comes with many benefits. And as a data engineer, we need to take advantage to build um, flexible, make our job more easy and make it more flexible. So basically, um, chat GBT comes with its own benefit, but aside that, it has its own limitation like specified here which says that may occasionally generate incorrect information, may occasionally produce harmful instruction or biased content, limited knowledge of word and event after 2021. So um, as a data engineer, you should take note when using chat GBT because um, it has its own limitation till 2021, which means that sometimes your lines of code that it generates might not be correct and it might not be working because it's kind of outdated. The model, the, the training of the model of this chat GBT um, was done last in 2021. So it hasn't been updated yet. So without further ado, let us get on to um, building data pipeline with um, chat GBT. So I will write a Python code, write a Python code to build a data pipeline on how to move a data set from S3 buckets to Redshift. Let's assume that um, we've already processed, um, we've already built, built an ET, make, um, let's confirm that we've already made an ETL pipeline on this project so we uh, have the we have the data set in s3 bucket and we we'll want we want to move it to redshift so let's ask chat gbt to write a python code for us So it's writing the code. It's slow sometimes, but um, it's actually do its job when it comes to writing few codes, not complex code. And sometimes it comes with um, some errors, which as a data engineer, you need to adjust it yourself. So like it said, um, um, awesome that um, the chat GPT wrote this code for us. So basically uh, we need to import um, Boto3. If you're, if, you're, if you're using Jupyter Notebook, you need to import Boto3. Um, you need to import um, PyCorp G2. And as the code said, here we have our host and our connection and the database you're going to be creating your username your password here is um retrieving data from s3 bucket so this is where you write your um your bucket url link and the file path so um encoding utf all, all correct and you copy in this code, it copies the um, data from S3 buckets to Redshift. So copy from yeah your bucket name, your S3 bucket file, the credential. So this is where you add your um, access key and as um, secret keys. And this is is ignoring the heading too. So Looking at the code, everything looks great. And it also write a comment here that this code uses Boto3 library to interact with S3 and the Cycop GB2 library to interact with Redshift. So it's connects to the Redshift, retrieve the data, and then uses copy command in Redshift to copy the data into Redshift. 
this credential for both S3 and Redshift are passed in as parameters when connecting to each services. Note the code assume that you already have S3 bucket with a file in it and a Redshift cluster with a database and a table setup. So before using this code, you need to um, you need to um, create a S3 bucket with your um, files. If it's in CSV, ASVO, you need to put it in your um, S3 bucket, and then you you would have created a Redshift a Redshift cluster with the name of your database, which you're going to use to replace all the stuff here and the table set up already. So this is it. And um, let's let's um try again. Let's ask him um chat GBT um if he can write this code for us with PySpark. So let's um ask him to write this same code for us with PySpark. Yes, so we need to import. Yes, you need to import Spark, Spark section also. Oh, good. Header true and um, infra schema true. And it's and it gives us um, the, um, the G, GDBC connection for Redshift, the property, the password, the driver, and here it's connect, um, it connects us with um, the properties. Oh. So basically it wrote um, the code for us, same code for us in PySpark, created the PySpark section. So you need to install um, the PySpark section, um, created the builder, the app name, the get or create, load the data, load data from S3 bucket, which he did here and the file part, he reads the, um, the data for us, um, reads the data from for us from um, the book from the bucket S3 bucket and now write it to Redshift. So PySpark is assuming, I mean, um, chat GBT is assuming that you have created um, an S3 bucket um, with the file name. It assumes that you, you have to replace it if you're using dot avo or packet or JSON or anyone that you're using, you replaced it here. And um, it shows us and it helps us to read the data to Redshift. And it assumes that you have created a Redshift cluster with the Redshift database and the tables. So um, this is an awesome um, section on how to use um, um, by, um, chat GBT. So let's try um, something again. Um, let's say for instance, um, you're, right, you're doing a transformation on your code and you want to um, ask ChatGBT some question on how to transform your code. Let's say for instance, you're writing a transformation on your code and you want to remove the, the art. Let's see the art, um, the art like this in between the names of um, odd, like a dead letter from your code. Let's say you're, you're moving the art in between the names. So let's ask chat GBT. Um, can you, can you remove all the
all the ads in the table column named name employee dot csv using PySpark So basically, this is what he did, what um, ChatGBT did. ChatGBT did, um, he um, said um, he used, in this code, the data is loaded from S3 bucket and then to DF method is used to create a new data frame with column that have all the art character replaced with underscore, finally your updated data frame is written back to S3 bucket. So let's take a look at the code. First of all, what the code, what he did here was to create a PySpark section. Yes, and um, get or create, then load the data from S3 bucket to any other or any other data source, but using X3 bucket in this instance. So first of all, you have the bucket name, the file name and the, um, and the format, yeah, header, info schema, true. So, so now it now replaced um, the art in the um, column that we asked him to replace in the column names. He replaced it with underscore. So what he did here is um, he used um, the, col the column function, column function replace to replace the at with underscore for cool and create um, a for loop in data.colum and now write the data back to um um uh, and now write the data back to to df new column writing the data back to s3 or any other database so now you can now he wrote he replaced there and assigned it to this variable. And now this data now is now written in back to this CSV um, file and give give the same header and and you can see that um chat GBT is awesome in answering some questions. Do it might not be perfect, do it might not be perfect, but from the code, you can still um, you can still replace some of the error because actually what we told what we told him to write is the art is to remove the art. But in this code, he come up um, the ChatGPT comes up with the idea of replacing the art with underscore. So um, this is it, guys. Um, um, thank you for watching my video and please um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll be building a project, a data pipeline project.